Hey my little girly fries, how are you doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Um, this is coming a little bit later than when I wanted it to, but here we are. This is my May wrap up. I had a pretty good reading month in the month of May and I enjoyed all of the books I completed even like though I didn't like some of them as much as I liked others I still liked it all as a whole and it was a pretty good reading month and spoiler alert so far June is turning out to be an even better reading month so love that for me but anyways let's just get into the books that I read this is going to be in no like star order it's just like like I'm going to have star ratings but it's just going to go in the order of when I read them and that's it. Not like what I enjoyed the most and what I enjoyed the least. Just the order of when that I read them. So starting at number one, the first book I finished in May was The Arithmetist by Brandon Sanderson. This is um, a YA fantasy where we follow our main character, Joel, who is an ordinary kid, but he really, really wants to be a arithmetist. And a arithmetist is someone who can do chalk drawings of creatures and like defensive circles and stuff like that and infuse it with magic so they actually come alive and they fight and stuff like that and it's pretty cool and Joel just really wants to be a arithmetist but he can't but he has studied so much about being a arithmetist and everything and he knows so many things about it he just does not have the abilities to it um, he goes to this academy and apparently children that are arithmetists are solely being hunted down and kidnapped or murdered and he is with a group of with a professor arithmetist professor and a fellow student who is arithmetist he is on this quest to solve the case now this is the first book and i'm what is going to be a series supposedly I'm not sure this book was written back in 2011 I don't think this is very high on Sanderson's radar of books to complete yet I mean if you know Sanderson you know he chugs out books at a pretty steady rate I mean the man is like a beast when it comes to putting out books um but this book was out since 2011 according to the copyright and I believe 2011 and it's 2021 so I don't know if this is really <laughs> high on his radar to like complete uh, more books in this series but I gave this three stars it was okay it wasn't the best I've only read the first two books in the Mistborn trilogy by him I am gonna be reading Warbreaker this month and I'm going to try to squeeze in the third book in the Mistborn trilogy this month if not I will move that to next month but I mean, compared to the Miss Porn trilogy, this wasn't that great, but this was still pretty fun and interesting, and I enjoyed it for what it was. And if he does write a second book to this or whatever, I will most likely be picking it up from my library as well. I'll put that over there. Uh, the next book that I read was Arts. This was Snakes and Ladders by Victoria Selman. Um, I messed up. <laughs> I requested this book on NetGalley a while ago, and they approved me, like, a month or so after I requested it and I did not realize when I requested it because I requested it back when I first made my Night Galley account so I didn't know the whole in and outs if you guys want to know more about Night Galley and stuff like that I will link down below the video that I just posted the video before this one where I compared Night Galley and Book Sirens so you guys can like get the breakdown of how each one works I've had a couple people tell me that it was pretty helpful so I'm happy about that but anyways I did not come across a video like that when I first made a NetGalley account so I was just requesting and I didn't realize that this was like the second or third book in a series so it's like a detective murder mystery series and in each book there's a different case but throughout all the books is one overarching like huge mystery and I didn't realize that but it did not hinder my enjoyment of the book I mean I got to like 20% before I was like wait a minute this the way this is written it kind of feels like there could be more books in this and I looked into it and I found out I was reading like the second or third book but I still read it I still enjoyed it um we follow our main character I cannot remember her name 
but she is a detective and she is trying to solve this case there is this murderer going around killing women and every time they kill a woman they leave like some type of like sacrifice some weird item so it'll be like goat meat or livers or flowers or hair like they leave different things sort of like almost an offering and she's trying to like basically figure out who's doing these murders or why are they doing it and the overarching like crime thing is in a previous book she took down this one um serial killer he's in jail but even though he's in jail he is able to still manipulate things in her life still cause things to go wrong in her life still able to know things that he shouldn't know about her life and she has to figure out how he's able to do that as well it was a good book i gave it um 4.75 stars i really enjoyed it the author did a really good job of recapping what happened in previous books without making it seem like she was just dumping the information like she was repeating what happened in previous books i really felt like you know i was just getting the bits and pieces that i would need in order to further my enjoyment of the story so i think that really helped in me you know not being too confused and in me being able to just go along with the flow it was really good the plot twists had my mind spinning and i haven't read a good um murder mystery in a while so this was really nice to read and the next book i read was seasons of Abaddon by christopher warren and his now wife i don't want to like butcher her name um and i basically i have a whole full review of this so i'm not going to go into too much detail about this but basically the author was posting on twitter and saying that he would send a digital art to anyone who wanted to read and review this book on either their channels their bookstagrams their blogs whatever and the cover had intrigued me so i was like all right i'm on board for this and i really enjoyed it it is a book that is told in four seasons and in each season we follow a separate character and by the end all their stories intertwine and connect and it was really nice to see that i ended up giving this book four stars and i truly truly enjoyed it um it had some dark elements to it which i wasn't expecting um it was very sad at parts um but it was a really solid book i don't know if this is going to be part of a series or anything um but it could it definitely reads as a good standalone um, if it is going to be part of a series, it is a definite solid intro to a series as well. So either way that it goes, it's a really good book. I highly recommend it, especially if you're into more of the fantasy, be more of the lighter kind of fairy tale esque almost kind of vibe to it. Like it was pretty good, even though it did have um dark themes. So like, you know, like be aware of that. That's something that you're like not into, but it, it wasn't really dark, dark. It was more like sad. <laughs> um... The next book I read was on a, another arc, and this is Bad Witch Burning by Jessica Lewis. I enjoyed this book a lot as well. Um, we basically follow our main character, Cottrell, and she finds out that she has the ability to talk to the dead. So she writes these letters and she'll say something like the dead ghost's name, like let's say Patricia, for example. She'll write Patricia... Um, I need to talk to you or something or whatever and she'll sign her name and then she'll burn the letter and then the ghost of the spirit of who she was talking to will you know arise and talk so she lives with her mom who has a string of deadbeat boyfriends and she basically i cannot stand Cottrell's mom i literally cannot stand her but she lets these guys treat Cottrell any way that they want she herself does not have a job neither do these deadbeat guys and so they really just milk Cottrell for everything that she has and Cottrell the only way she could pay for rent the only way she could support herself and her mom is through doing these letters because people will pay her to talk to their relatives um so one day she is bringing back the spirit of her best friend's grandmother you know they do this often to talk and then when the grandmother when the conversation is done the grandmother is like you can't do this again because it's going to turn out wrong bad and you are going to be in danger and she disappears before control can ask her like what the heck she actually means um 
So then Cottrell, for a while she stops the summonings. But then she begins to do it again because she really, really needs the money. She's really in a bad situation. And this time when she resur when she tries to do it, she ends up resurrecting the bodies of these dead people. Not like necessarily their spirits. So she makes more money off of this because people are like, oh, I could physically have my deceased loved one. But it comes with a price. She's draining a lot of herself into this and, you know, essentially she's just like burning everything to the ground hence the title and it's just it's just a dark spiral that keeps going and going and that is that i don't want to say anything else i don't want to spoil anything but it was really really good it was heartbreaking at times there were times where i wanted to just shake her and be like leave your mama like your mama does not love you but it's a hard realization to come through when you find out that your parent does not love you the way that they're supposed to i hated control's mother throughout this book there was no like redemption arc for her or nothing she was just the horriblest person i could think of because of the way she just laid there and let these things happen to control you know she was definitely not a responsible mother um trigger warnings for domestic violence trigger warnings for um minor sexual harassment trigger warnings for animal death a big animal death <laughs> and just trigger warnings for abandonment and parental neglect and stuff like that like it's just man it was a hard <laughs> it was hard but it was a good book as well and I'm glad that I got the opportunity to read it um so then the next book that I read uh, I, I gave that book 4.75 stars as well I didn't mention that the next book I read was Some Days by Maria Wernick I think that's how you pronounce the name and this is an Argentinian translated picture book I gave this five stars this book was really short and um it's basically about a girl and her mom and her, the girl's father passed away so you know they're in their grieving stages and the girl tells the mom about how she goes out to the clothesline and she wraps herself up in the sheets and transports herself to another world where everybody's okay no one's hurting there's no sadness there's no grief and she escapes to that for a few minutes and stuff like that and it really helps her get through this whole situation with her dad being dead and she wants her mom to do the same to experience it and like i said it's not a long book at all it's a picture book so it's mainly pictures and there's like a sentence on each page and it follows just like two colors like basically a lot of reds and a lot of grays and I was reading this to my son and I cried at the end which I was not expecting I was just like because it's so short and it's just a sentence per page you would think you're not gonna cry but I, I bawled like a baby I'm like super sensitive and my son was looking at me like yo mom you good and I'm over here just like I need a minute like that book was so sad to me um it really struck something in me and I do plan on reading it to my son more but I need a minute because just thinking about it right now is making me a little emotional it's just like I lost my grandmother um back in 2017 and like she had um she had breast cancer and I was just picturing like you know my grieving moments you know because I didn't get a chance to like say goodbye to her before she um passed and so reading that I'm trying not to be emotional oh my god please don't get emotional um <laughs> reading that um it just was like it just hit something in me you know and oh my god I'm sorry I'm trying so hard not to cry um fuck. <laughs> but yeah it was really like it was really emotional and it really struck something in me so i'm like that's why it hit me more so i feel like if you're someone who has lost somebody um in your life that you were close to um this is a good read but it's also gonna probably make you cry even though it's so short or maybe i'm just like super sensitive but like yeah okay Oof. let's move on to the next book um i gave that five stars if i haven't mentioned that already um the next book is lord <laughs> The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. Um, I have read the Broken Earth Trilogy by her. Absolutely adored it. Um, definitely my top favorite series ever. It's like right alongside Lord of the Rings. Absolutely love it and I can't wait to reread it. Um, this is 
the next book I read by her after that and I absolutely loved this I ended up giving this 4.75 stars um this is also going to be a series I don't know how many books are going to be in the series but this basically follows I'm going to try to explain it the best way that I can uh New York in whole it's in four five boroughs four boroughs I think yeah I think it's four boroughs and they are trying to basically protect New York City against this one entity that is trying to destroy New York like each avatar represents a city and they all come together and they're trying to fight this entity I can't really say more because it's hard to explain but it's so good it's a perfect blend of fantasy with sci-fi elements to it and if you've read the Broken Earth trilogy or even if you just read the first book the fifth season N.K. Jemison's writing is just so freaking good it has like the same elements it's fantasy sci-fi perfect mix and I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would because the reason why I didn't buy this and I just picked it up at my library was because I wasn't sure because it's hard to explain what this book is about and I didn't know much about it and I don't hear too too many people rave about this like I usually hear them rave about the Broken Earth or um, her Dream Blood duology. I don't really hear them talk too much about the city we became. So I didn't know what to expect. So I was like, let me just read this from my library first and see if I like it. And if I like it, then I'll buy it. And I'm going to buy this because this is so good. Everything, like, I had whiplash reading this book because so many things were just popping out like boom, 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 things were happening. And twist after twist was coming along. And it was just oh, she talked about so much like even like topics that are going on in the world right now she hit on and it was just so good and I just got I love N.K. Jemison like literally this just keeps solidifying the more I read of her I just keep solidifying my like love of her and just knowing that she's definitely gonna be she's definitely my favorite author like hands down I am so excited now to get to the inheritance trilogy um i was gonna wait a little bit but i think i'm gonna pick it up soon probably even this month because i'm just i'm really in an nk jemison mood like i'm on that kick right now um and i like i said i gave that 4.75 stars the next book i read was it feels straight to talk by james baldwin this was the first james baldwin book i've ever read i do want to read giovanni's room by him because that's like one of his most popular works and a lot of people rave about that and I was supposed to read it like way back like a while ago and I never did um I think for the Black Alina thought if I'm not mistaken and I just never got around to it and I really need to because everybody raves about it and I really want to know what's so good about it um I gave this 3.75 stars um, I really enjoy James Baldwin's writing. His writing is so, so freaking good. And he has a way of making you feel emotions with like the smallest of sentences. But what I I think, and this is probably just a me thing, the whole story kind of sort of went over my head. And I wasn't feeling the ending, like the way the book ended. I was just like, I was left wanting more. And I had so many questions that were not answered. And I just feel like whoa like I wasn't expecting the book to end I thought that I still had more to read so when it ended I was like wait what I gotta go back because I was reading it on Kindle I wasn't reading physically and I'm like that's it that's that's the book <laughs> that's the end so it kind of hampered my enjoyment a little bit but I really love the writing and I am so intrigued to read more by him because he just has a way of just like making you question things making you feel things making you you know just contemplate your own reality and your place in the world and stuff and it's just like i absolutely loved it and i can see why he's such a popular author um and i need to read all of his books but i really want to start with giovanni's room because that's the one that everyone raves about and i think i would probably like that one more than this one um, the next book I read was The Katana of Trust by A.C. Ward. Uh, this book I got as an R through Book Sirens and I enjoyed it. I gave it 3.75 stars. It was good. It was a little on the short side. I think it's supposed to be like a fantasy novella. It's a Japanese inspired fantasy novella and 
we basically follow two characters we follow Shu and I cannot remember the male character's name I'll put it down here um but I know it begins with M so I'm just gonna call him M and basically Shu she was the story starts out that you know she's about to get murdered by her father because she has like some magic in her or whatever and he I guess thinks it's evil or something I don't really know why he wanted to kill her because of this and her mother is like jumping in to defend her and tells her to jump in the water and swim to this island where these creatures called Kami live and she's like they're going to accept you because you have the mark and she had like a like a dragon tattoo or something and on her shoulder so she swims to this island and she lives with the Kami and basically the Kami are like spirits but like like elemental spirits like you have the rock kami you have the water kami fire kami grass kami and all that like wind kami it's just like they're all are different elements and sh this island disappears for 10 years and come like and then comes back so it comes back once every 10 years and so she lives there for 10 years and then when the island comes back after her living there for 10 years that's when M has to go over to the island. Apparently there's this ritual that is done where the like coming into age men, I guess you would say, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Um, they will come and they will go to this island. And when they go to this island, it basically, they have to go there and figure out like what's the true secret of the uh, island or whatever like that they have to go through trials and stuff like that and M ends up meeting Shu and they team up together so they can figure out what's going on and if there's a way to maybe get Shu off the island and into like the real world I guess and it was a good fantasy novella I enjoyed it for what it was um I wish it was a little bit longer because I felt like some things happened a little too fast and I also was a little uncomfortable and this is just I guess a me thing but the name AC Ward was bothering me because I'm like I don't think this is a Japanese author so after I read the book I looked into it and she's not Japanese um, I believe she's white and she studied I believe studied in Japan and she studied a lot of Japanese things so I'm pretty sure she delved into this history like I mean I'm pretty sure she did some research I don't know how accurate her research is and um I don't know it was just it just was like a little made me a little uncomfortable but then again it could just be me <laughs> it probably doesn't bother other people but like I usually like to read stuff from like an actual like if I'm reading about a Japanese fantasy I'd rather read from a Japanese author because I feel like they would do the research more but then again it is described as Japanese inspired but it had a lot of Japanese elements to it like the kami and things like that so I don't know it was just weird for me but let me know if that's something that like bothers you or makes you feel some type of way <laughs> if like an author that's not from a specific country or place is writing a book that's based off of that certain thing like does it bother you or do you feel like it's okay I'm, I'm not too sure how I feel about it so um, yeah, that was 3.75 stars. The next book I read was another arc I received, and that was Simone Breaks All the Rules by Debbie Rago. I have a whole review video. I will link that in the description below where I gushed and read about this book. <laughs> um, I love this. I, like I said, I gave it 4.75 stars, and it was just nice. This is basically following our main character named Simone. Did I? Okay. Yeah, our main character named Simone, and she is the daughter of her Haitian immigrant parents and they want Simone to like they just want Simone to have a successful life to study hard you know to graduate go to college and marry a nice Haitian boy someday Simone doesn't mind you know the studying and stuff like that she's a good student and everything but she wants to have more control in her life she wants to be able to excuse me she wants to be able to do the things she wants to do so she's in her senior year of high school and she's like, you know what, I'm not going to do this. Like her parents are trying to arrange her prom, like to have her go with a Haitian boy that they know 
and you know set her up like they set up her older sister back when it was her prom and Simone was like hell no I'm not doing that I'm doing what I want to do you know she has a crush on this guy named I believe his name is Gavin I think so I think his name is Gavin and she wants to go to prom with him and you know her parents are not gonna accept it because he's not Haitian yada 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 and so she makes a playlist with two other girls in her class that are also you know like kids of strict parents so on their playlist is things like go clubbing um skip class go to the city for a day uh change their look go to prom with who they want to go to prom with and it's just hilarious it's like they do like the whole checklist of things that they want to do and the things that go on in this book like I just felt it was the perfect contemporary I was reading a lot of chunky fantasies and I needed something that was a little bit more on the lighthearted side something that was gonna make me laugh something that was gonna make me like insanely happy and this literally ticked all those boxes for me I really loved how even though Simone's parents are depicted as strict she didn't have like a like a strange relationship with them like I feel like a lot of books like I mentioned in my review a lot of books where it has to do with strict parents especially strict immigrant parents they kind of paint them in a bad light like make it seem like oh they're being so overly strict for no reason but in reality especially when it comes to immigrant parents they want you they come to this country they come to America because it's considered the country with the best opportunities and stuff like that and they do it to better the life of their children you know and they're strict on their children because they don't want them to have to go through what they went through you know they want them to succeed they want them they know that their kids are going to have to work twice as hard because they're children of immigrants and you know america is a shithole that looks down on fucking immigrants and you know they know that and they know the stuff that you know their children are going to have to face and they're trying to prepare them for it they're trying to you know just make them mold them into these people that are going to be successful no matter what that are going to roll, like be able to roll with the punches and stuff and I like that Simone was able to understand that like understand where her mother was coming from and appreciate it and I also love the fact that Simone was able to talk to her mother and you know express what she was feeling and things like that like of course they bumped hands from time to time obviously but they still had love and respect for one another and I really appreciated how the author you know incorporated that into this book because it was such a refreshing thing to see i really really enjoyed this this is the first book i've ever read by debbie Rigo, Rigo, and i plan on reading more of her because i really just enjoyed this book and the last book i read i'm a little embarrassed <laughs> to talk about this one is the grace of kings by ken leo i'm embarrassed to talk about this because it took me months like forever like easily two or three months to finish this book it is a 600 and something page book so it shouldn't have taken me that long but um let me just talk about what it's about and then i will go into why it took me so long to read this so basically this book it follows um our two main characters kunigaro and mata zindu they are trying there was this arc archipelago of a place called Dara that was split up into seven different kingdoms and then there was an emperor named Emperor Amabidere who merged all the kingdoms together because he thought that that would bring peace amongst people but it just caused more turmoil and disagreements and stuff so Kumi is setting out on this journey to like bring peace to everybody and Mata is technically searching for searching for revenge because his family was completely slaughtered and he's like you know what I'm out here for revenge and him and Kuni team up because at first they have like the same ideals it's like you know kill the evil people bring peace to the citizens but there was like miscommunication that happened while this is going on they split off to do two separate um battles and they were supposed to get back together but something happened miscommunication like i said because there was one little rat in the group that decided to not pass along the message he was supposed to pass on and that confused mata 
and he ended up thinking that Clooney betrayed him and then they're going back and forth back and forth and their friendship is basically going down the drain um this book I enjoyed the first 20 30 percent of it I was really feeling it I was like yo this is like gonna be a new favorite I'm absolutely adoring this then I got to the middle and the middle was so tedious I'm so sorry but like it was so many like I, I'm, I'm a character to a reader and we had a huge cast of characters in this book but the problem was everyone was dying in like five seconds like I would get introduced to one character and then like in the next three pages the character was dead and I'm just like well what was the point you know like and it's just back and forth all this like like I get it it had to have like political intrigue and some of the stuff was really interesting in this book don't get me wrong like the whole middle wasn't just like boring 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 but there was a lot of parts in there which I didn't care about and when I'm not caring I tend to put the book down and I'm a poly reader so I'll put the book down and I'll read something else and it took me forever to keep picking this back up and I would only read a few chapters and put it down read a few chapters and put it down and it was just very slow but then once I got through that middle part and I started getting more towards the end it picked up again and it was really really good I could not put it down again so I overall I gave this three stars because I really enjoyed the beginning and I really enjoyed the ending sequences and there was enough in the middle to keep me interested and to keep me going because it was a part of me that was like maybe I should DNF this but then I would come across a, a scene and I would like you know this is really good and I really wanted to see what was gonna happen with Cooney and Mata and I got devastated at the end. The end was pretty sad, but I mean, I love a good ending that'll wreck me. <laughs> and I have the second book on my shelf. I don't know if you guys can see it from where I'm sitting. It's like up there. Um, and I do plan on reading that. I'm gonna take a break though. I don't think I'm gonna pick it up this month. I'll probably pick it up next month or the month after. Just because it took me so long to read this and I don't want to put myself through another struggle. I'm hoping book two is better. I've been reading the reviews on Goodreads from people who read this one and didn't like it that much. And then they read the second one and they really loved it. But then I saw people that read this one and really loved it and they didn't really love the second one. So it's kind of interesting. I'm hoping I like the second one. I heard it's more character based than it is with all like plot based and all the actions and everything like that. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> and I will hopefully rate book two higher. But yeah, that is my main wrap up. I'm sorry it was kind of boring and I couldn't describe like half the plots and things that were going on, but it was a really good reading month for me, you know? Nothing was lower than a three star, which is good in my book, cause three stars, I don't know how everybody else rates, but for me, three stars means it was an okay book. It meant I enjoyed it. Um, two stars and below is kind of bad, is <laughs> bad, but three stars is good four stars is obviously great and five stars is obviously amazing so I enjoyed my reading I'm enjoying my reading for June and you guys are going to know soon why I'm enjoying it so much because um I am going to do a current a current reads video this month of what I'm currently reading so you can be on the lookout for that and I will show you the books that I'm reading that I'm having such a good time with and um yeah hopefully my June wrap up I enjoy all my books that I'm reading but I will see you guys later I hope you guys are doing well don't forget to check out the links in my description because I put out ways that you can help out on what's going on in the world ways you can educate yourself petitions you can sign videos you can watch all that good stuff um and if you like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe because it helps out my channel a lot I will see you guys later I love y'all be safe bye